The next step in the static analysis is to analyze the forces acting on the object. As stated earlier, we assume that the sum of all forces equals zero in static analysis. Here, we will break down each force into two components. A component that is parallel to the object or the leg, and a component that is perpendicular to the leg. Here, let's create a new axis system, with one axis running along the leg, pointing towards the ankle, and the other pointing perpendicular to the leg, pointing anteriorly. This means that the direction towards the ankle is the new positive, while the direction towards the knee is the negative, and the direction towards anterior or forward is positive, and direction towards posterior or towards the back is negative. Once you break all forces into two components, we can sum all the forces that are perpendicular to the leg, and we can also uh, sum all the forces that are parallel to the leg. The sums of all forces in each direction should add up to zero. Using this logic, we can find out the magnitude of the joint reaction force. Let's now look at each force separately. We will start with the weight forces of the leg and foot and the weight force of the cuff weight. Here, I don't want you to focus too much on the small details, but we can find out the angle between the weight forces um, in leg segment using data. If we know the angle between the weight forces and leg segment using data, we can easily calculate the components of the forces that are parallel and perpendicular to the leg using sine and cosine function. Let's say the angle between the weight forces and leg segment is 50 degrees. With this information, we can calculate the parallel component of the weight force of the leg uh, by multiplying the weight of the leg and foot and cosine of 50 degrees. The perpendicular component of the weight force of the leg and foot can be calculated by multiplying the weight and sine of 50 degrees. If the weight of the leg and foot is negative 5.5 newton, the component of the force that is parallel to the leg will be 3.5 newtons, and the component of the force that is parallel, uh, perpendicular excuse me, to the leg will be 4.2 newtons. The component of the weight of the cuff weight can be calculated in a similar manner to be 2.9 newtons and negative 3.4 newtons. Now, we will take a look at the quadriceps force. The force, uh, now we know is 500 newtons in magnitude, is pulling on the tibia at a 20 degree angle. We can calculate the parallel component of the quadriceps force by multiplying the 500 newtons and cosine of 20 degrees. The perpendicular component of the quadriceps can be calculated by multiplying the 500 newtons and sine of 50, uh, 20 degrees. Now we know that the component of the quadriceps that is parallel to the leg is negative 469.8 newtons, and the component of the quadriceps that is perpendicular to the leg is 171 newtons. The negative value for the force in the parallel direction indicates that the force is pointing uh, towards the knee, and the uh, positive number on the perpendicular component of the force indicates that the force is pointing anteriorly. The last force to consider is the joint reaction force. Unfortunately, we don't know anything about this force, but we can solve for the force using what we know about the other forces. As we said, since the knee is not moving, the sum of all forces acting on the object will add up to zero. This means that all forces in the direction parallel to the leg will add up to zero, and all forces in the direction perpendicular to the leg will add up to zero. In the direction perpendicular to the leg, we have components of the weight of the leg and foot 
with the cuff weight, quadriceps force, and joint reaction force. Since we already know all of these components, except for the component of the joint reaction force, we can solve for it. In the same way, in the direction parallel to the leg, we have components uh, from the weight of the leg and foot, weight of the cuff weight, quadriceps force, and joint reaction force. Since we already know all of these components except for the components of the joint reaction force, we can solve, solve for it too. All we have to do is plug in all the numbers that we already know into the equation and solve it. We, know, uh, we now know that the parallel component of the joint reaction force is 463.4 newtons and the perpendicular component of the joint reaction force is negative uh, 163 newtons. If we know the parallel and perpendicular components of the joint reaction force, we can easily calculate the total joint reaction force using the Pythagorean theorem. While the total joint reaction force tells us how much force is acting on the proximal end of the leg, it is meaningful to look at the parallel and perpendicular component of the joint reaction force because they have different effects at the joint. The parallel component of the joint reaction force acts to compress the bones together at the joint. In this case, the force represents how hard the femur or the thigh bone is compressing into the tibia or the leg bone. This means that too much of this force can lead to wearing out of the articular cartilage between the femur and the tibia. The perpendicular component of the joint reaction force pushes or pulls the bone to slide against each other. In this case, the force will cause the tibia to slide backward on the femur. This means that too much of this uh, force in this perpendicular direction can lead to excessive joint translation and instability.